When the president takes office in January, he may be very well tempted to want to avoid the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Presidents rarely succeed in this area, and it's one of the most vexing problems facing American foreign policy today. There will be a lot of regional distractions, be it the ongoing Arab uprisings, the conflict uh, with Iran. Nonetheless, there is no such thing as benign neglect when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and the President will be forced to confront it. Regional allies will call upon the United States to deal with the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Europe and other international allies will do the same. And there's also a strategic imperative to maintain the Israel-Egypt peace treaty, to preserve the Israel-Jordan peace treaty, uh, to help ensure that conflict does not break out between Israel and the Palestinians. And that will require is, uh, continued American engagement. But when the president engages in the Middle East next year, it's, it will be a different Middle East context that the president will be forced to address. First of all, both Israelis and Palestinians will either be about to face or just be coming off of new elections. That means you could have different leaders on the Israeli and Palestinian side. At a minimum, you'll have leaders that have different political mandates than they're dealing with now. That creates different realities. Secondly, you have the ongoing changes taking place in the region, and that will affect the context in which the peace process is pursued. It means that Syria will likely not be helping those adversaries of the peace process in the region, and that's to the good of the efforts to make peace. But at the same time, Egypt, which has long been a patron of the peace process and helped advance American efforts in the peace process, will not be a player. Egypt will either be distracted by internal developments or take a neutral position towards the peace process. It will not be uh, an ally of America in efforts to advance the peace process. That means the United States is going to have to look to new approaches and develop new tools uh, towards dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The first step will require the President to establish new relationships with both the Israelis and the Palestinians. Those relationships have not exactly uh, flourished under this presidency, and they need to be renewed and strengthened, and a new strategy uh, developed in partnership with the Israelis and the Palestinians. But one of the most important questions that the President is going to have to face is, is he going to seek to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or just manage it? Presidents who seek to resolve it uh, set a very high goal for themselves and are rarely successful. Presidents who seek to manage it uh, are, have an easier time of it, but at the same time will hit much more instability along the way. In any case, whatever the choice that the president takes, it will be a different peace process given all the changes that are taking place on the Israeli and Palestinian side, that are taking place in the region, and that are taking place internationally. So we will expect to see a different approach to the peace process regardless of who takes office in 2013.